Okay modelers welcome back and this video is the first of uh, the videos I'm going to do with like the news updates in the modeling scene and things like that. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of little things here like links to sites and that where I found some really good information and things like that. Uh, forgive the noise of the shed creaking in the background I do all my stuff in the shed down the backyard and at the moment there's little breezes every now and then that hit it and you're going to hear creaking and groaning. I've had people say that it sounds like a conveyor belt, but it's not a conveyor belt, it's actually <laughs> just a shed down the backyard. But anyway guys, we'll, we'll get on with this. Uh, this is just a bit of a trial video, see if you guys like it or not. Just a bit of info, a bit of stuff to do with new kits coming out. Uh, a couple of nice you know, little tutorials or sites that I found that I think you guys should go and have a look at. I'll have all the links down below, and if I don't reference the names of the people um, responsible for some of these things I'll actually look it up and I'll have, we'll have it in the description down below to, to give credit to the people who've done models or whatever that I talk about. So anyway guys let's kick off with the first one. Okay here we have this is a little site I come across uh, this was up on Facebook there was a link on Facebook I found and it's to do with the Tiger One paint schemes. Now this is a great little site it, it's, it hasn't got like a heap of paint schemes but it's got a few nice ones in there and it, what it does it talks about the different colours that the Tiger One used uh, during the war in the different years and you know what colours they went to and all that sort of thing. It talks about the winter whitewash, uh, when they used that and the trouble they had getting it off and all that sort of thing. Okay so the guy who's done this has actually got a book as well and it's called Inside the Tiger One and I've got a link down below there to the book and to, to this article and also the guy's name, Gene something, it slips on mind at the moment, well will be in the description down below guys. And it's a great little article there on, on talking about the Tiger One and that. And one of the things he does mention about the hassle of putting whitewash on the, the tanks and then trying to take it off. And I mean, obviously there's a lot of variations to go with that. And especially towards the end of the war, I mean, when you got to the point where you had kids actually fighting the war for you, which the Germans did, the last thing you're going to be worried about is making sure your tank's up to scratch with the latest colours and things like that by taking the winter off, winter whitewash off and that. Unless you're in a real situation where it was going to be sticking out and you were going to put yourself in danger by not taking it off completely. So, of course, you would have tanks, which we've all seen photos, where the winter whitewash is partially washed off. You know, they sort of give it a quick scrub to try and knock it all off, but there's still a bit of it on there and it's faded everything back. But, yeah, great little site, guys. Do go and check this out. This one here is going to be ICM. Uh, then now ICM is a, a kit manufacturer that is, I think it's in Poland or Russia or something like that. Uh, some of their products are a bit hit and miss, we know that as modelers if you've ever worked with ICM stuff. Some of it's not as detailed as what you can get in other kits and things like that. But they do do some um, really different stuff. Now these are some future releases that are coming up. And the first one is the, um, the KM Model T 1917 Ambulance, the American version. And it's in 135th scale. Now, it's great to see some World War I stuff. I mean, lately we've had a lot of, you know, a big flood of, you know, you've got wing nuts with the aircraft, you've got the guys releasing all the World War I armor, the tanks and things like that. Not that they had a lot of tanks in the war, but it's great to see a company doing some World War I stuff that's a bit different in 35th scale. In an ambulance, I mean, this Model T has been done before by some other companies, and I think even ICM have done this before, but this is 100% new moulding. This is this is all new, so it's not like those old crappy kits that you used to get that wouldn't go together properly. It's got a detailed engine and chassis, so that that just speaks volumes for how much detail they put in this. When they put an engine in there, fantastic. I'm not sure how detailed that engine is going to be, but it does say detailed engine. Um, so, I mean, you may have to put leads on it, things like that, but it's great that they're adding that sort of option in there. The other, the other thing that they put up on there is that they got four options, four deco options on there. So it'd be interesting to see what those four options are. Obviously there would have been a lot of field ambulances and might add different um, decals or different you know, markings on them at the time. This gives you four different options, so that's a great little, little extra. Okay, the next one from ICM, another future release, which is coming out fairly soon apparently, is the 135th um, ZIL 131 emergency truck, a Soviet version. Now this thing's going to be awesome, I, I, I mean, even if it's not the greatest fitting kit, us modelers can work around that. This is just a great, this just screams out for diorama. I mean this is a, a Soviet vehicle, a service vehicle, so just imagine the stuff you can do with this. 
Now, the, the, the thing that really grabs me with this is the same. It's got a detailed engine, chassis, cab, and interior. Now, when it says interior, I'm hoping they mean the interior in the back, the service bay in the back where they'd store all their tools and, and things like that. If they've got that, that's going to be absolutely awesome. You'll be able to have the back doors open, uh, look in there and see all that beautiful stuff that's in there. Now, this thing screams for diorama. Um, great stuff. The other thing with this is it's got two decal options. Uh, now I have no idea, I haven't actually done any research on the net to look at the um, the different versions of this vehicle what it was was around. But uh, I mean, being a service truck, the decals are not going to matter that much. It's going to be more the detail that they've got in this thing. It looks superb. Looking at the the uh, 3D printings and the and the uh, the actual box art they've got for this, this thing looks superb. It looks really great. Uh, obviously, being a truck, you can leave that cab off it turns into a logging truck um, but yeah this is a kit i'm really looking forward to it's something completely different okay so our next one is from a, a model company called thunder model now i'm not sure who this company is whether they're they're brand new but going by their facebook page there's only a few months of of posts in there so i'm i'm thinking they're not a very old company i think they're just starting off now they've got a couple of really interesting kits coming up and going by the pictures here, they've got sprue pictures and stuff like that. Um, th these would have been in initial production sprues, but they're, they're looking very crisp. They look okay. Uh, we'll have to find out about the fit and stuff like that. But the reason I, I love this is because they're bringing out some different stuff, some really cool different releases. Now, the first one is, it's the US Army loader. It's a tractor. It's in 35th scale. It's got a little loader bucket on the front. Now this thing again, it just sings out to have a diorama. You can do anything with this. You, you wouldn't have to have it as a US Army tractor. You could probably use it for after war stuff and things like that. This is a superb thing. And the other thing that it sings out for is weathering. This is something you can weather the hell out of guys. You can have it parked in the bush like someone uses it on their property and gets knocked around. Even in the war, these things would have been worked to their deaths basically. There would have been so much work done with these. They would have been really well worn a lot of these. So. This thing screams out for some great stuff. As far as the options for decals go on this thing, or versions and stuff like that, there's not actually any information there about that yet. But uh, hopefully there might be a couple of little diff different options there as far as that goes. Now, with Thunder Model again, the next one they got is the Hertz Lake. This one's got a dozer blade. It's in 35th scale. And again, this thing looks beautifully detailed. If you look at the, uh, the, the sprues and things like that, which I'll, I'll link to pictures and all that for these things down below, uh, but just looking at the, the box art and things, this thing looks superb. And again, something completely different. Having that dozer blade on the front, fantastic. Again, this thing sings out for dioramas and weathering and all that sort of thing. So it's great to see companies releasing different products like this. I mean, I love my World War II armor and things like that, but it's fantastic to see some different things. Okay, guys, just forgive my voice in this part of the video. I've, I've just come down with the man flu, so... <laughs> I'm pretty ill at the moment, so my voice is going to sound a little bit husky. <clears throat> These pictures that are up on screen at the moment were sent by one of my subs, a um, guy called uh, Rudder Gator. And these are a Pink Panther done out of the Jade Panther kit. Now, this was done for a Valentine's gift for his wife. And she must have liked it because apparently it's still sitting on her desk after how many years it was he gave it to her. Um, I'm not sure if she realises what he is saying. The whiskers on the barrel there were taken from one of her hair brushes. Um, he's got Hello Kitty decals on there. And this is the sort of thing I was saying about loving people doing something different, you know, thinking outside the box. And, you know, and especially it's got a story behind it as in he made this for his wife and you know, something completely different. I think it's really, really cool. Um, I've been through these photos several times. I showed my wife, she thought it was pretty cool too. So guys, you know, if you've got anything like this you want to show off with me, that's that's great. Send it to me and I'll definitely put it in videos. If, if you don't want your name mentioned, let me know. I can not, definitely not let, mention your name or whatever. Uh, with Rudder Gator, obviously not his real name. It's his, his user name here on YouTube and he's one of my subs. And we've had a quick little bit of back and forth there. Um, it's just, it just you know, shows how good my subscribers are. All, most of them are really friendly people. So... Okay guys, just a quick update too on the, the MRAP review I've done from Panda Models. Uh, I've done it uh, quite a while back there, you'll see it down in my uh, inbox reviews. Uh, I got a, a message from one of the users saying that he's bought this kit and the instructions, um, half the pages are missing, I mean, they're there but they're blank apparently. Um, and he's not the only one, There's a few. he's got a few friends that are in the same boat. 
um, because my instructions are complete, I'm going to actually photocopy those uh, or scan them into my computer and send him a copy. Um, if anyone else has got this problem, please let me know. If there's any kits you see that I have here that you need instructions for, let me know. I'll definitely, I can definitely scan them in and send them to you if you like. Um, yeah, but this guy, if you've got this kit, guys, just check um, that your instructions are, are full, uh, are complete, um, and let me know if you need if you need me to, to send them to you. Okay, and to end off this video, guys, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. I want to add these in our news articles where there's something a little bit different. Um, show off some models that people are building, some really cool ideas or things that I think are really cool. And this one I think is fantastic. This is an SU34 fullback inside a light bulb. How cool is this? I just love it when you see people who think outside the box and do stuff like this. Don't ask me how it's done, I have no idea. Maybe it's the same as the ships where they have a string attached to the sails. The sails are folded down, they push it in the light bulb and they pull the string and all the sails sit up. Maybe they done the same with this with the wings and tail wings. Put it in there, set it and then pull that string. I, I really don't know guys, it's like watching magicians on stage. You might be guessing forever because the guy hasn't put up how he done it. Again, I'll link to the guy who's done it down below. Um, I found this in some forums in um, the Kempf Group 144 and the guy is Sebastian C. Uh, but I'll put a link down below guys so you can see this and go and have a look at this. Absolutely superb. This is beautiful stuff. I mean, we, we all love to see things that are done outside the box. Um, it, it gives you inspiration to try and think outside the box yourself and look at something, doing something different yourself next time. So anyway guys, that's the end of our first video series here on uh, model news and stuff like that. I've got a lot more stuff to do. There's some great releases coming up. Um, so there's a lot of information I want to get out there and a lot of things to talk about with uh, with Italeri and uh, all the companies basically are releasing some beautiful stuff. There's even a car by Tamiya uh, that I want to have a look at and show you guys as well. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, please let me know down below. Uh, if you didn't like it, again, let me know down below. If you'd like to see more of these series, let me know down below, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.